nice to see you all because America's gone backwards. Oh no, forwards. <laughs> it's gone. So they have got spring when we don't. Spring time change. Hey, Michelle, lovely to see you. Hey, Sue. Good morning. Good morning. So you guys have gone forward, right? Is that right? Right. Yeah. Right. Correct. We okay. spring forward. It's 9 right. a.m. here. Pacific we, time. Great. We, okay. So we spring forward, not this, not now. <laughs> Later. Hey, lovely to see you all. Um, and I'll just let, as people are coming in, you know, we're doing the third moon of the year. Oops. And my top is continuously popping open. So it must be that kind of moon. Whoa, hang on a minute. It's mostly all girls here, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so we're on the third moon of the year of this uh, manifestations that I'm doing this year. Um, and, you know, I looked last night, I've been in agony, as Diana knows, with, I had dental surgery a week ago. And you think that when you start having an implant done, that it'll be worse near the time of the surgery, but actually it's just gotten worse and worse. And I was like, ah. So I've taken mega painkillers to be here with you. And, um, and I saw the moon last night and I, I remember just thinking, this is the healing moon. So I'm really going to take some healing from it. And maybe some of you guys need healing too. And this will be uh, an opportunity where it's not just a passive, uh, meditation where we'll, we'll go through something a little later but you can actually just inquire right now do you need some healing you know is this a time I, sh I sure do I need my mouth to stop hurting <laughs> and uh, so as people are coming in we've got a moon in Virgo thank you Dana yes it's okay it's all good because I need this tooth in as well you know so there's a reason um, for having things like that. And your heart needs healing. Yeah, for anybody else, if you want to just say, so we've got that, that swoosh of awareness going on for anybody who needs, who really feels they need healing. I work in a group and we often meet on a full moon and we always do healing for people, you know, but it's very rare that I ever asked for healing for myself. So it's kind of an interesting one. Right now I could use, well, painkillers are the main thing, but I just, oh, I just wanted to move on to the next step of this, this healing thing. But yeah, anybody else want to put down what's going on for you? you? You may not want to be specific if you want to keep it private, but just let us know if you, you, know, you feel like you need healing. Sylvia, go for it. Speak to us. Yeah. Gordon. Uh, one. It's a little bit crazy in Atlanta this weekend. Um, uh, and today my daughter went into labor. So oh. we, we need some healing. Okay. And we can, you know, as a group force, this becomes almost like distilling the energy of each moon that we can tap into and you can send it out to other people. Mm -hmm. So if you don't personally need healing right now, mm -hmm. you know, you can just draw it in and then send the energy to your daughter. May mm -hmm. she have a very easy birth. Yes. She's yeah. Working for a vaginal one. They want to force a C-section on her again. I know it's the birth scenario. <laughs> it is. Everybody <laughs> perfect birth and then it ends up being well it is the perfect birth whatever the baby does. yeah he knows how he wants to get delivered exactly um and so i want to tell you a little bit about let me have a look so oh michelle was glutened were you oh dear you you had a gluten attack um julie is is tapping in from canada i haven't seen you for ages my dear it's so nice to see you here um, and let's see, we've got Christine sending some healing to those who need it and Sue Ann saying you need it in your heart, but you're also sending it. And actually that's the ultimate thing about healing is those who are able to receive are also great healers. 
if you if you cannot receive i mean on so many levels if you can't be um contributed to if somebody can't you know say something to you if they can't invite you if they can't offer something and you might recognize this because if you're a, a, a kind of lone wolf and you do everything yourself and you're used to getting stuff done and then somebody says to you oh I, I'll, I'll carry that for you and you go no 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 it's fine it's fine that is lethal you need to stop that right now you need to go thank you so much for that help and, and receive it in because what happens is people then pick up that you are unable to receive and they will stop offering and it's a little tweak along the path of uh the beautiful path of healing and awareness and everything especially for strong women because strong women do not let anyone contribute to them so it's just a little take note moment um, and I would also say that, you know, with the, with the moon in Virgo, I've got somebody else who knows a lot about this, Diana Sampson here, but my, my understanding of this Virgo and moon, it's very earthy. And we in alternative circles call it the healer's moon. And the reason for that is it tends to be the moon that if you could imagine way back in the days of old, when herbalists would gather together and go and pick their herbs. This was that kind of moon. It was the one where it had a lot to do with literal medicines and cures and tinctures and creating, you know, plant medicine. And there was gatherings of women who would go out and, you know, at the right time always would be gathering herbs for the community. So you can see that across the board in every culture. Um, and so there's still that resonance of that kind of energy that we have nowadays, unless you're in a, a very specific, um, healer community and you're, you're gathering your herbs, it's unlikely you'd be doing that. Right. But if we could cast ourselves into that space, that this is a time when there would have been great circles of connection for women, particularly, and it would also be, um, you know, this is a spring moon. So there's a lot of buds coming up, if you notice, all over. I mean, I'm really seeing it in England. And it would be a perfect time to start to do that kind of working together. Because Virgo is such a healer, um, she's really like a medicine woman. It's got that energy as well that you can start to tap in on a very deep level. I don't work so much with plants that's you know i i avail myself of them i work more with frequencies and so there's different ways of understanding what you need in healing but when i do healing with people i often um, am given very specific insight into um, symbols colors um, high frequency to to alter something for the better for others in the very rustic communities, you could imagine it would be literally picking, you know, herbs or mushrooms or something like that. And so we all have our ways of, of the thing that we're working with to be able to gain some insight into the healing that we need. Uh, does anybody else have a specific area that you, um, you can think of besides the ones, the examples I'm giving frequencies is more of a, out there kind of healing but you know when you think about herb, herb herbalists can you think of anything else that would be a gathering of that information just to keep the conversation alive what else would you be gathering if you think about all the different women that you know and they all have certain kind of medicine. Essential yeah. oils. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect, and Lorraine. Dr. Yeah. Bach. Yeah. Remedies. Yeah. Exactly. And now we've got doTERRA. I mean, I've been using doTERRA. Absolutely. Melaleuca on this one. Um, yep, food, exactly. Dana, food. And you can start to think about how different... Um, 
you know, medicine women, if you like, and though I'm sure there's a medicine man on here too, medicine men too, would have different ways that they would put forward their methodology of healing. Ayurveda, perfect. I've just seen Michelle has said that. And you can just think about, you know, when you're on a healing journey, as all of us are, uh, there, there is a wonderful old fable, if you like, myth mythology about the wounded healer. Do you all know about the wounded healer? I mention it from time to time. Well, the wounded healer will be in astrology, you will notice it where your Chiron is placed in your chart. And Chiron, the mythology around Chiron is that wherever you have had to face something really big, usually, or maybe it's actually not so big for you. So for some people, it's huge. You know, they'll have had to face cancer or some, you know, deeply traumatic uh, ailment. Others will just have a, a lighter version of that. But for everybody, it's still a healing journey. And whenever you have to face the wound, wherever it is in your chart will be exactly where your healing gifts are too. So it, in a way, it, it, it's self-reflexive. Whatever you feel is the hardest thing for you to deal with is often also the breakthrough thing that you then become the expert about to deal with. And, and so it goes. That's, that's how we become great healers by not stepping away from the thing that is right in your face, the thing that is the most uncomfortable, the sadness, tragedy, um, loss. So this goes not just for physical ailments, but you know, one of my good friends lost a daughter who was four years old from a rare brain tumor. And she, and it was a awful tragedy as you can imagine. And we were there during this child's, um, last six months a three and a half year old got diagnosed and they said you know that the final six months will really be like she'll have tons of radiation treatment and she will be gone in six months and my friend had to you can imagine take this on this horrendous um pain over losing a child which for everybody is i mean that they say and i'm not a mother but i totally relate to this that Parents don't expect to lose their children first, right? So it's like this counterintuitive thing. Anyway, we went on this healing journey. This child had an amazing six months. And I do believe that everybody's life is important. And it's, it was meant to be, you know, that she, that was just happened to be her, if you like, karmic soul path. She had a karmic contract. But we made her last six months amazing, like a fairy tale. And she didn't ever suffer. She didn't ever have, you know, a, a terrible adult perspective of suffering. But the, the mum did. I mean, you can imagine the mum had to go through this uh, major tragedy. And she had another younger daughter who was two at the time. And that became her healing strength like i've now seen it 10 years on from that event that that the trauma of going through a child's death has made my friend the fierce uh healer that she is she's so compassionate she's so able to deal with like the icky stuff whereas some healers don't want to go that deep they they would rather you know, everybody has just a bit of laryngitis or something, right? That's about as much as they want to deal with. But this friend of mine can go right to the depths of anything. And that's exactly now her gift. That's, that's what created her as, as a great healer. So I wonder if you relate to that a little bit, that some of the things that you've had to go through were awful obviously nobody wants to go through anything we all want just a shiny little life don't we but it's not really the way of the great healers um does anybody want to say anything about that before we go into our into our meditation oh and i like the way you've also added crystals sound and color and intention yeah so many levels of healing does anyone have a direct experience maybe not that traumatic of becoming the healer from also the trauma? 
just unmute yourself. Anybody who wants to add some insight into that. Um, uh, we had as a family a very traumatic event. My, my, uh, my father, my sister um, died in a car accident. And she had a major, oh, it was a car accident with a train. And her, she was brain dead, 23 year old and a young child. Um, and I saw, that was the first time I saw my parents cry. And my mother went into a depression. Um, this event was 30 years, well, 35 years ago. And it's still very, uh, uh, for my mother, still very upsetting when stuff comes up. Um, yeah, but for me, it made me a stronger person. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a week later, because I was a young mom of a one-year-old, so uh, my nephew became my second child for a while. Wow. Uh, and uh, yeah, but he lost his father last year to a sudden heart, a heart, a heart attack. So he, I became his parents. Again. I'm helping him. Yeah. Right there. yeah. Well, so it, th this is just, yeah, but it made me stronger and, you know, I don't really certain things, you know, financial stuff or <laughs> doesn't really bother me that anymore, you know, since 1999, that yeah. was my turning point. You're, it's very important money, but life, you know, you cannot buy lo love, life and loyalty with money. That's yeah, or health. <laughs> your health, <laughs> life, yeah, Absolutely. Health, exactly. Life and health, that's 100%. And anyone else have, thank you, Sylvia for that. Anyone else have a direct experience of, from a painful experience, becoming a very stronger, a very strong person or something? Anyone else want to say anything about that? I can, I can okay. talk. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When I was 17, I had uh, two um, difficult traumas. At first I didn't have had any where to live because my mother met a new husband uh, or a new man and wanted to live with him. And uh, just uh, the day after I, I started to move to uh, my own flat, uh, my boyfriend was in a motorbike accident and he almost died, but he was in the ICU for four weeks, I think, I think. and he lived but he was totally um, changed in his personality. So I started early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to take care of others. And now look at you. And You're myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it uh, it was really meant to be. And uh, after that, I I'm not afraid to meet people in deep crisis. Yeah, I relate yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. And, so I, you know, the thing is, people think this is such a, such a dark subject, but we're all going to die, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We all know we're going to die. We don't know when. Mm. Some might know when. Mm. But mm. to be able to be somebody who can handle the edges of life, rather than it just being one shiny, perky little Lululemon video, Mm. Um, which is, wee, you know, everything's fine all the time. And actually, I don't really relate to that. And I don't find it a better perspective. Um, last two years ago, I think I had the privilege of, of sitting through somebody's death. My uh, chosen stepmother, my adopted step, I, I adopted her, basically. It was my ex-husband's mum, And it was profoundly beautiful you know to be able to all the way through that journey where she was talking and 
saying lots of things in the hospital. And then she went to silence and she told her she was going to go to silence. It was like, it's too much to speak now. I need to, I'm going and don't hold me, please. I'm going, I'm trying to go. And then the whole journey. And it was just profoundly beautiful. And I'm glad that I can sit in on those things because I'm not really, I don't expect life to just be a, a, a perky little, you know, ray of sunshine all the time. So that will set us up for this, this kind of conversation because truly healing, the first thing about being a healer is don't be afraid of what you're looking at. Second, never see the ailment as the outcome. So it's, that's, that one is quite challenging because it's projecting in front of you um, health. So when I work with people and I'm doing healing work, I'm always seeing them as healthy. That's quite challenging, especially when they're not. But that's the trick of the healer. You need to cast this, this thought form forward where you're actually, you are projecting them at their maximum health so that then the energy and the frequency shifts and they shift. Um, and then the third thing is never be afraid. It's like we, we are all on a, a very weird and entangled and wonderful journey. And some people, if they, you know, if they're leaving early, it doesn't mean they've failed. The worst thing that I hear is things like cancer. Oh, beat the battle. That may, meant they lived. Lost the battle. That meant they died. That's, it's just, it's the wrong languaging for it. It's, it's irrelevant um, what the outcome is. They've, they've got their journey and, and you've got your journey. And this is about part of acceptance at such a deep level that we all have our journey. And then it's like, let's make some, some people's journey better along the way, you know, whatever they're dealing with. And that's the role of the healer. So um, I'm just looking at this with Sue, that you came to the realization that you were suppressing your pain, hence the disconnect from your heart, and you're in a process of accepting and embracing and healing and expansion of your emotional capacity. Amazing. So let's go on that journey. Um, you know, and uh, now would be a good time if you just need to whiz out for a quick pee. <laughs> I always give you that option if you need to, um, and then we'll go straight into it. And then settle as you come back into, into your space. Find a, re a really nice, relaxing space to be in. So nice to see all you guys here. It's wonderful to connect with the world. Um, and drop into your body, drop into almost like the lower frequencies so you can just release, let go. And take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale through your mouth. And another one of those. Deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. And another one of those. Deep breath in. And exhale. And start to allow the body to completely relax. As if you are jelly. Everything is soft. There's no backbone in there. There's no vertebrae. It's just you are the softest, squishiest thing. Sinking into whatever you're sitting in. And as you breathe deeply, start to breathe into the back of the heart. So we're drawing breath in through the lungs, into the back of the heart. And exhaling anything that is tired, frustrated, have doubt. And just keep focusing on the back of the heart. So as you're breathing in, you're bringing in clear, fresh, vibrant Virgoan moon energy, the healer moon. And then breathing out, letting go of anything that is disturbance, anything that would keep you stuck anything that you are disappointed about. 
and keep breathing. So you're focusing on the back of the heart as if it's this chamber, this movable chamber, which is getting bigger with every breath that you take, allowing that energy into these parts. And then you can also start to breathe sideways. So your, your capacity of what you understand as heart space is changing and you're getting bigger and deeper and wider into this space. And if we were stirring it with a stick, you could imagine stirring up some old memories and perhaps some sadness may come up in that. That's okay, just take a deep breath in and breathe out. So moving this energy through you allowing yourself to feel the range of emotions that we have. Not just a two dimensional level of emotions, but all the frequencies in the world that we have the capacity to feel good about. And we also have the capacity to not feel good about. Allow them to just be stirring up in that heart. And as you're breathing, Breathe into the sides and the bottom of the heart now. So you're really expanding the capacity. Uncross your legs and your hands and feel what it's like to just be in this process of expansion. And right in the center of your heart, there is a white crystal plane and you find yourself standing on this crystal plane. You're in the heart space, but you're looking at spaciousness, which is as large as infinity in all directions. And because it is a white crystal plane, you can feel the buzz of frequencies going through this solid rock beneath your feet, noticing that you have bare feet, And in the distance, you can hear the sounds of the Pythagorean scale. And you don't even have to know what that is, but there's different tuning fork sounds that are being played to you on this crystal platform. And you feel the resonance not only as a sound, but moving through your body as a frequency and a vibration. The more that you breathe, the more that you feel that you're in tune with these sounds that are being played to you. Very beautiful sounds, harmonics. And within this, you find exactly what your three sounds are. You may be musical and you may even have a sense of the scale. But if you aren't musical, it doesn't matter. You just have to feel your way that there are certain frequencies that feel better than others. And you're feeling yourself experience this up through your feet all the way into your body. It's as if you were listening to music and you're able to say, I prefer it, the high notes or I prefer the low notes. And you're just attuning yourself within this Pythagorean framework of the ultimate healing sounds that are available to you. In the distance, you see a group of women gathering. It's as if you are seeing an image of ancient times where the healers and the herbalists gathered. And they are having what is considered to be an old herbalist circle, sharing information, sharing medicines, sharing pathways. And you witness these ancient women who were your forebearers, all the way back through lineages and threads 
that you can feel the DNA shifting and moving and at some very deep level understanding where it is that you've got these skills from, which countries are in play here. The land itself, what land has taught you and your ancestors? And you hear these women gathering information, asking each other questions, comparing and making notes and laughing together. And you realize that you're witnessing an ancient image of the sisterhood. Some of the women who are in this circle are very ancient and some are very young. They had all the seasons of womanhood maid, mother, and crone. And there was an equality and an abundance of energies between them. For some, they were more attuned to the new moon energies, the start of things. And for others, the mother energies of the full moon, the rising, the expansion. And for some others, they held the energy of the waning moon of the completion of a cycle and of things that needed to be let go of. And as you witness these women gathering and chanting and dancing and connecting in as they're creating the medicines of old, you experience this now as a more modern vision coming into your life. As you stand on this crystal plane, high above you, you see a starburst and a very bright shining light explodes into consciousness. As it does so, you feel the reverberation of something new that has been like a catalyst in the atmosphere. You feel it reverberating through your crystal platform and all the way through every cell of your body. And you realize you've just experienced what is a catalyst in the old way, that something has altered. And you now are able to do a body scan at a very fine level. As you tap into your body, Start to attune it with sounds. Start to notice where something is a little dull. Start to feel the areas in your body which need some loving. And you have the ability through this catalytic new awareness to just simply be given information now. So as you're breathing, you ask for information now. Ask for the parts of your body to speak to you in chimes and sounds and hums and reverberations that you can understand what is a little bit out, what needs some attention, what is not at its highest frequency. And take notice in your body, where are these places? You may have the understanding of it being like chakra work. If so, locate the areas which are slightly out of alignment. Feel into this space and allow the information to just simply come forward of what in you now is slightly out of alignment. And then, as if you are able to receive at the highest level, in the way that a sister would offer her great help to you and you would be able to receive it with a resounding yes, you start to hear the sounds and the frequencies that are gonna put you back in balance. 
you can hear these sounds starting to move through your body like a gift being given to you. At times you may even feel a buzz or some kind of pulsation as you move deeply into areas which even if you just have the thought, I'm not aligned, then allow that thought to guide you to the area that is not aligned. And allow the sounds and the frequencies on this beautiful crystal plane to reverberate and adjust you. Emotions may come up as you feel these different parts of your body telling you things in a symbolic language and you understand how you hold on to energy and sometimes you hold on too long. And there are other things which you are not allowing receiving. So ask yourself, ask your body to reflect the lack of receiving to you, which areas are not receiving. If it has gone even harder, then it will be like rock energy that no frequency can easily get to. But with the sounds from this Pythagorean ancient symbolic healing, you're able to get to parts that you would not be able to even express in language. So feel the areas that need some attention and allow these sounds and this chamber of cosmic intelligence to go to work on you. Breathing deeply into the back of your heart. The sisters now give you an opportunity to understand in a very deep way something that is out of alignment. They're sending their energy through ancient methods for you to feel their gift. And it may occur to you as a sentence, a piece of information that just comes forth now, which is a little bit about your lack of alignment. Where are you out of balance? And then when you know where you're out of balance, ask the sisters, what can you do about this? What would be a first step, just one tiny step of information that comes forward to you that will help rebalance you? Receive this information. Take a deep breath in and receive it all the way to the back of your heart. Allow yourself to breathe into this space and receive this piece of information. and receive the piece which is telling you what a first step would be to start to regulate and balance a condition which is out of balance. When you've gathered that information, just allow it to become part of you as if you are shimmering it through every part of your body on a frequency level. The first part of healing is often the understanding that something is out of balance. So receive this now, even if it isn't in words, receive it as a frequency. 
Breathing deep within. Breathing deep within. Taking this information to the very core of you. And then as we raise your vibration up seven levels, I want you to experience an acceleration that comes up through the feet like a DNA spiral clockwise. It moves beneath your feet first. You feel something moving like a vibration. And as you breathe, you feel it coming up all the way up through your legs through your knees, all the way up through your thighs, into your hips. Clearing and cleansing anything that has gone before. And then it moves through each chakra. As it arrives at the root chakra, you feel a sudden shift of consciousness. And the energy continues to weave its way up through the sacral chakra, the womb, ovaries, sex organs, creativity. It continues to move up into the power center, solar plexus. It moves up into the heart, readjusting, sending you up. Now four levels of frequency. It moves up into the throat, clearing all energies to do with communication or things that have not been said. It moves all the way up into the third eye, clearing all ability to have psychic knowledge, hunches, intuition and connection and it moves up through the seventh level bursting forth through the crown chakra where you have direct frequency connection to source feel yourself vibrating at level of source as you are a fragment of source and source is you you are one and the same. You can receive a perfect image now of you in perfect health, like a template blueprint. It may be from when you were younger. It may be when you're older. Just receive this image of yourself in perfect health, flowing through to you. And allow yourself to thank source, thank yourself at source. Thank you for receiving. Great acknowledgement of the sisters, the medicine sisters who've come before you in your lineage. And allow yourself to now breathe with this new frequency, which is repairing and activating you at the highest level. Then bringing your hands onto your heart now. Bring your hands onto your heart and breathe into your heart space. And feel what it is to be truly loved. To be loved as one of the many, many particles of beauty on this planet. To be loved in a circle of sisters and brothers 
to be acknowledged for exactly who you are. And now start to rub your hands together. Rub, 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 rub. Keep your eyes shut. Place your palms over your closed eyes. Breathe in. And exhale. And again. Rub, 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 rub. Place them over your closed eyes. Breathe in. And exhale. And one more of those. Rub your hands together, generate heat. Breathe in, and then you can rub your face, back of the neck, temples, and just come back into this space. And then allow yourself to just, if you need to remind yourself of anything, which was the information that you received, you could write it down. But if you just can receive it as a frequency, as information, just allow it to permeate, resonate. Does anybody want to share anything about that with us i find that sometimes the frequency shifts make me speechless <laughs> here i'm love laura how nice great you sure are <laughs> Yeah, go for it, Sylvia. I can see your hand. Yeah. Um, the first message was keep talking. And then there was something right to unite or touch something, a T word. I don't know. Touch, probably. Right to touch. Right to touch. Or unite. Well, <laughs> that's so you. <laughs> but, yeah, maybe. It, probably it was touch. It doesn't make sense why I, I cannot write and touch. I don't know what this means. I mean, these pieces of information, they come through and they're not logic. You know, mm -hmm. we're dealing with a different aspect. Mm -hmm. But just allow it in. Mm -hmm. Allow it in. This Virgo moon is really powerful for getting information that you wouldn't normally receive. You know, and we're shimmering out all those old frequencies. Imbalance happens so quickly. It's a tiny, tiny little thing. And then if we can get to it when it's just going out of imbalance, you know, the whole thing is just healed. Anyone else want to say anything about what happened for you? I can see Christine. Yeah. Yes. Yes, if, if nobody else wants to speak up, I'll speak up. Um, I find it very interesting from the point of view from the old herbal remedies and the sisterhood and the locations. Basically, because my grandma never went to a doctor in her life, she lived off herbal remedies. And that just drew me straight back. Um, I found as per places uh, one was tasmania one was romania which i found was very interesting the other was like the mongolian tibetan mongolian places the herbs that i was given it wasn't one was uh, one was just rosemary one was rose hip one was juniper berry that's what I can remember. But I also visualized, basically it took me back to probably one of my past lives when I was um, brewing, actually brewing a potion. 
I just I just felt at home with what you were saying. That's probably the best way to describe it. And when you were talking about the parts of the body which needed a lining up, very much I do have, I've always had a weakness in the throat chakra with communication. But I do I know where that's coming from. At the same time, it is still an area I've got to work. On. And also the pericardium, the meridian came up this time, and the wall of the heart, which the, it, I need to break down a few barriers still in that area. And uh, of the trust element comes in very much so. And receive it. It was beautiful anyway. Thank you very much for that, Sally. Always, always a pleasure. I never know where we're going. <laughs> never know where we're going. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's always a bit astonishing to me where we go, but hey. And how that level of healing works on people and frequencies work on people who can't receive other forms of medicine. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I did feel also, because I, did, I didn't, I thought, well, no, I don't need any healing. But then as you were doing the meditation, it's the lights just come on me as well. Um, I felt that I would, I've been struggling. Maybe a lot of the others have been struggling in the last, last few days with seeing clearly. It's like we've had a haze across our eyes. I don't know. A few of my friends and colleagues have said the same thing. And I just, I've not been able to see the light as I want to see the light. It's strange. I haven't been able to see clearly. And it, it just, um, it, liked, it took down a veil. Mm. It's probably the best way to, I can describe it. I, I, I feel like I'm seeing clearly again. Great. Well, it, it's quite hard sometimes to describe energy shifts. That's right. You know, amongst a group of people. Um, so, oh, I see Sue's going, you're heading for the airport with an open heart, I hope, my dear. Um, you know, but, it, but I, notice, I notice energetic shifts that go on and it's hard sometimes to even describe what it is. Um, but I know that recently, I would say there's a big leveling up of um, high level perspective, um, like seeing the bigger picture, being able to shift out of some old paradigms. Uh, and, and that's come in like a, like a group work. Like there's suddenly we were, we're kind of game on to our higher purpose, if you, if you like, a big group working like that. Um, I don't know if anyone else resonates with that, but that was just like a frequency shift. Do you, do you resonate, Patty? Yeah, I see you waving. <laughs> I don't know how to turn my technical stuff on and off. It feels like a major, um, I had the same thing with the, um, the vision, by the way, with my vision being blurry. And, um, and this actually, I didn't know I was out of alignment until and i jumped in halfway i'm sorry i had the wrong time written down but um oh, you, you jumped right forward. in yeah um but i feel a major shift and um an elevation of the feminine is what i'm feeling mm. right now mm -hmm. which is uh it's very eye-opening <laughs> it is very eye-opening indeed <laughs> and and all you need to do is receive this is uh really a time of receiving so any of you who say, no, don't help me, I can open the door myself, or don't take that bag, stop yourself. Even in a symbolic way, we need to be up for receiving right now, you know, big time. And you never know where it's gonna go. But that lone wolf stuff is, in, is not appropriate right now. That, you know, I can do it all, don't worry. I'm so much like that myself, so I'm speaking to myself as well. But it's just like, let others in, let people help you. Um, even on the smallest levels, it's gonna alter something big for you, you know? And um, I also want to mention as well, while you're all here, that we are on the third moon and we are doing 13 moons this year. And there is one opportunity when I'm gathering people together live and I just want to say that this year, so you have the opportunity if you want to come. I am running a retreat in Glastonbury, which is the heart chakra of the universe. Um, I'm sure many of the English people know where it is, but it's super incredibly beautiful. Um, but it's an ancient landscape of sacred sites. So it's got the 
you know, the divine feminine, the two springs that come down. It's got the Tor, which is a hill, which is the divine masculine. And I am running a retreat in the, the first five days of August over the full moon of August. So all this work that we do, it's wonderful tapping in all over the world. But I, I'm also going to just say, if you can, we would go to town on these energies. Um, that's the harvest moon. And it was specifically chosen because it's an earth energy moon and that you get results. Earth is all about you've got to see it, smell it, taste it, touch it, or it hasn't happened. So I wanted to create something really powerful around an earth moon because a lot of people say, you know, I want to have a baby. Right. Well, I want to have a baby is really different than I'm having a baby. Right. <laughs> That's earth. Um, I want to create some phenomenal results in my business. Great, that's a great thought until you create some phenomenal. So that's earth. Earth is always, you got to see it, smell it, touch it. So I'm working with uh, a group of people. Um, there will be some other healers as well. It's very much to do with my soul gold program in earth. And if you are interested in even finding out about it, even if you don't know that you could be there or you're terrified of the pricing, the usual stuff around earth, which is, I don't want to see it. As long as I don't see it, I'm okay. Just put in moon on this chat and I'll get back to you and, and talk to you about it. As um, I was speaking to my pal Dana last week, she was like, oh, can I even speak to you if, if I'm not doing something? I'm like, of course you can. You know, this is my, this is my um, spiritual work, right? And it's, it's, it's not like the other work is, is totally different, but what I'm saying is in this pathway, what I'm offering, I'm very available for chats, right? It's not just with the end that you sign up to a, to, you know, a course. I want you to feel like you can inquire, like we can have that conversation, like it's open. And just when we had that conversation, um, Dana and I had the most amazing connection last week, didn't we? It was about a week and a half ago, I think. And for me, how that makes me feel is like, oh my God, like I can just tap into a sister who I don't even know who she is. I got to know her. I got to see what effect she's having on her environment. And that's this network of healing, you know, and, and all the work that we do. So feel like that with me, please. Um, that's what it's about. But if you are even vaguely interested, the nearest airport is the nearest to the August retreat. Yeah, Bristol will be the nearest, but um, Heathrow also. London, London, and then I always drive down from London. It takes three hours from where I live in London. But that side, it's about two hours and the train is about an hour and a half. Sorry, there's my throat again, an hour and a half. It's very easy to get to, but it is truly magical. And this year, I don't think there's gonna be another opportunity to do a live moon. So that's why I'm mentioning it. That some years I can sort of sort out various things, but my schedule is not gonna make it happen. Mm. So if any of you can gather, and you want to make some magic and some big shifts in your life, that's what's open. Um, and that is us for now. We have two more minutes of this, uh, of this live. I sometimes go over, but I, I'm not going to because of my throat. <laughs> you can hear it, it's a bit hoarse. Um, but I want to just wish you so much like insight and medicine and have a look at these, these things that are going to shift and move you into place, allow the frequencies to come in. And if you wanna do it again, you'll be sent the replay anyway. Um, allow yourself to just go through it again and just, just shifting at a frequency level um, to the higher version of you. You came in as, a, as the perfect blueprint, the health, everything perfect. So sometimes we need a little bit of work to just get back to that, you know what I mean? And hopefully by next week or next moon, my mouth will be repaired. Uh, wishing you so much love. And I will see you on the other side next moon. Wishing you so much love. Namaste. Have a beautiful evening. Look at the moon. Look at the moon. <laughs>